Hey guys, Patty from Patty's Crafty Spot, and I am here to share with you this mini album I made with the amazing new release from Creelys. These dies are made for mini album makers. I was so excited for this one, and then I had to keep it a secret for a while, so that really killed me. But I wanted to share so badly, and I was so excited to get started on this mini album. So anyway, let me tell you a little bit about it first. Let me find my ruler. It's hiding. So this mini album measures approximately eight and a half by nine with a two and a half inch spine. And I will have a full video tutorial on this that will include inches and the met um, inches and centimeters. So you'll be able to make this no matter where you are at. The paper I used was from Ciao Bella. And this is just the creative pad. This is the A4. But I actually used two of the 12 by 12 paper pads. And it is the Sound of Spring. So this mini album, I am just calling the sound. So anyway, this is the front cover. This paper is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. So let's walk you through. So right off on the front cover here, this is one of the new dies. This is the large um, journal and planner die. And you can see it makes an, a perfect pocket for mini albums. I also have a pocket in the back right here. And that's a nice angled pocket. And I also used um, the labels and tags, the big labels and tags die number 13 for my tags. So, and these all just fit perfectly right in there like that. And then you come over to here and I went ahead and this is using the medium die. Let's see if you can see it better. So you can see the medium die and then I also used one of the new on the edge dies and there, it comes two in a package and this was the number 40 along again with the large pocket die and the tag dies number 13 there as well so then it opens up and then I created double pockets on each side so just like that and these dies all work well together and it's so easy it's almost a no-brainer when it comes to lining things up and cutting them so then I also created let me take these out I'm going to need these in a minute anyway, so I'm just going to leave these out. So then I also created with the new dies a nice little fancy edge right here. And then this pulls out. Now I didn't do anything more to it. It is only partway done. And this is to put photo mats and stuff on. So it'll just be like, you know, plain photo mats and stuff like that on there. So, but I did create a nice little decorative border right there. And then that's using the die one direction and then you use it in opposite direction. So I actually use both. So this are, these are both from for, um, on the edge die number 40. So it makes a very pretty unique little design. So then this page here is just a solid page for photos. On this side here, I did use one of the new decorative dies. Let's see, you can see it right there, absolutely beautiful. That's also one of the new on the edge dies. And then we open up here. Again, room for photos here. Now I made this little pocket ensemble using the large pocket die. And it opens up like this. So everything just tucks in. So if you have photo mats and stuff, you can just go ahead and set them in there. And then these, they just tuck in. So they're not real tight. So this way you can just go ahead and tuck them in. Oops. just like that and then it makes a unique little pattern along with holding all the tags and stuff in there so kind of cute and unique and it just folds in like that and then over here again room for photos whoops room for photos right there so this right here is all one page or one signature depending on what you call them so I have three of these that are identical throughout the book and then I have a fourth page which is a little different so again we'll go back over here with my nice little pocket this is with the medium this is with the large 
and then also with the on the edge die and a pocket for the back right there. And then again, really pretty. And I did mix this up with black and craft cardstock. Another one. I thought it was unique. I was working on it and I was just trying to come up with my samples and I was using black and craft and I really liked it. And I've made albums in the past before using the two colors and it is kind of neat. It's a different look and I really like it. So I went ahead and just continued from my sample and I just went ahead and made the whole book that way. Again, going over here, the, the dive, full page for photos. And the nice thing about using these large pocket dies is when you, you'll see in the video tutorial how I do it, but this backside here, it's nice and smooth and it's a perfect size to go ahead and add photos. So I didn't bother adding any mats to that or, or anything. So again, over here. So then over here, this is the third page um, that I did differently. So I did a little different. I used the flower dies. This is a set of three, die number 51, with this little string closure. I wanted to make something that way you didn't have to use magnets and stuff. And I was afraid in the video, you can see how I'm kind of thinking it out. If I put magnets down here, then the top could pop open and stuff. So I didn't want to do it that way. So I created the little closure with the string and it just opens up. And I use these small pocket die right here. So these do, I didn't make any tags for that, but there is spots where you can put like a little bookmark tag or whatever you like. And then this is with the large die. And I also use the oval dies, um, the, the ATC dies, to go ahead and make this little window pocket. And it does have acetate on it. Super pretty. And then it just closes all back up. And I again, I walk you through how to make that. And then on this one too, I went ahead and on the back side of this one, I made that little fancy piece there for the tag. And you can just have the big photo mat right there. And then I ended up using the medium pocket die to make like a little set of pockets. And let's go right there. And then we start over again with our little page. opens up photos. I don't although, although I don't know how you can even cover that paper over. It's absolutely stunning. And right here. So this one here you will notice I did do this one a little differently. I put the pockets on the page that has this versus on this page over here. And that was totally by accident. When I was putting this together, I didn't realize I had accidentally flipped my page. So the first two pages are the same. The fourth page is a little different, but you can put these pocket dies anywhere. The sizes for this album are made, so you can put them anywhere on it. So I thought it was cute. I was going to take it off, and then I decided I would just go ahead and leave it there. So you will notice that is a little different from the other two pages. And then right here, so we open up. Lots of room to hold photos. Back page. And then again, this just repeats the same thing as the front cover with the pocket die and some photo mounts. And there we go. So really a fun album to make. I was so excited to make this when the new dies came out. So I hope you enjoy this. Again, there is a full tutorial following this video. And I hope you enjoy it. All right, so enjoy that tutorial, guys. Bye. Okay, so let's get some measurements here. So either write these down or pause and take a picture. Um, either way, probably pause would be better because it's not going to be up that long. So this is for the chipboard cover right here. Up here. Chipboard cover in inches and in metric. And then here are your pages. You're going to make three of these. And these are your measurements in inches and in metric. Let me see if I can zoom in. So there we go. All right. So go ahead and pause and write those down or take a screenshot. All right. And then for the binding system. 
here is the binding system in inches, and here it is in metric. In the video, I do walk you through how to do it in metric because I did purchase a metric scoreboard, but it was confusing to me, so I kind of walk you through how to do that one in the metric. So make sure you check that out. In inches, these are the score measurements for you, though. All right, and then page three, these are what you're going to need. These are in inches here and metric down here. And I forgot the flap one, so hold on. So for you're going to need to cut two at <clears throat> three and a half. So you're going to cut two at 8.9 by 21.6. So you need two of those. Those are going to be your flaps. All right, so you're going to need that one. And then the inside cover pockets, that's what you're going to need in inches. And that's what you're going to need in metric. And you're scoring on all four sides on both those because that's going to be a corner pocket. All righty, so enjoy the tutorial. Okay, so we are going to get started on our base page. So this is going to be piece A, no score lines, and piece A1 is going to have a score line at the top and at the bottom. All the cutting measurements and score lines are going to be listed in the beginning of this video if you did not already see it. And that should have them in inches and in centimeters. So what you want to do with the piece 1A, just go ahead and fold it on these score lines so you can see the tape right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and burnish it down a little bit so you get a nice crisp fold. So you're just going to put this one aside. So then now we're going to work on this piece, the one that has no score lines. And we are going to use one of the new on the edge dies. I'm going to use this one, and this happens to be number 40. And I'm going to use this one right here. And these are approximately four inches, I believe, four and an eighth. Yep, four and an eighth. So what we want to do on this piece here is we are going to center it. So I'm using my center centering ruler. And I'm going to find the center. So right there. So I don't know what the centering would be if you had a, um, a metric. I don't know if there is centering metric rulers. I'm sure there are. But on here on the English one, this one is going to be four and a quarter on each end because my overall distance of this is eight and a half, so it gives me four and a quarter. And then I'm going to take this piece right here, and I need some washi. And I want to find the center of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and stick a little washi on it. That way when I find it, I can easier to stick it down. So let me make sure I'm centered. So on here, seeing how this is the, it's about a four and an eighth, I'm going to go ahead and just eyeball it. So it's just past the two inches on each end. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick that down there. So that should be my center right there. And I'm going to cut this piece out right here. All right, I'll be right back as soon as I cut that out. OK, so I'll cut out. And you will, I am currently using the Spellbinders Grand Caliber to cut these out just because the paper here is larger. So you definitely need something wider than the standard Big Shot ones. So let me get the washi off. There you go. And then I just need to make a little cut a little bit there just to I'm 
There we go. So then on this piece here, now what you want to do is now that you've cut it, you want to go ahead and attach it to the top. So you'll have this nice, pretty little pocket. Let me just show you. So you'll have that nice, pretty little element there. So let me go ahead and stick that down and show you. Making sure it's even side to side. And again, I hold it down and just do that. Walk my hands over to the other side. All right, so, so the look of this, now this isn't the right size yet, but this is how it's going to go. So this is the look we're going for. As you can see, it's longer than my page. So, but yep, that's what we're going to do. All right, so we will move on to the next step in one second. Okay, so now you're going to take your B piece and you're scoring at a half inch or 1.3 centimeters. And we're gonna go ahead and fold this over. Right here. Go ahead and burnish that down. I also want to go ahead and trim up my corners a little bit. So I'm just, just taking off a little, little bit of the point. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and fold it so it's under. And this is going to lay on the top of this piece here. So it's laying on the top of your A piece. And make sure it's all lined up. That looks good to me right there. Untuck and stick it down. So I'm doing something different. I am alternating my papers between craft and black just for an added look to it. So right now we have this and then right here is where we have our little pocket and this goes all the way through right now. So that's where we're at right now. So now for one of the new dies that we have to play with, this is the large pocket. So we are going to go ahead and cut out the large pocket and that is going to sit here. So let's go ahead and we're also going to cut out. So I'm going to do the large pocket in black and then I'm going to do the medium pocket in craft. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these two out and I will show you in a minute. Okay, so these are cut out and these are going to make your life so much easier. When these came out and I saw the new releases, I was so excited about them. I could not wait to try them. And not only do you get the die to make the perfect size shaped pocket and everything, you also get the centerpiece. So that way when you're going ahead and cutting your pattern paper, you've got the perfect size that you need for that. So that's amazing. So I went ahead and applied my score tape to my sides. So on the larger one here, you can use the half inch score tape. And as you can see, look at those perfectly mitered score lines. You don't have to worry about any overlapping or anything on those. And on the smaller one, you will need the quarter inch score tape or whatever method you prefer to adhere your pockets. So I'm going to actually wait on this one because I want to show you something on that. So on this one here, I'm going to go ahead and center it to my front, leaving a little bit of spacing. So you can see the spacing right here and I'm leaving the same on here. So I'm just going to turn this because it's easier for me to remove the tape. So again, I'm going to hold it down lift up and remove the tape from the bottom. Now on this pocket, I am only at the moment just going to go ahead and stick the bottom down, not the sides yet because I want to put my pattern paper on it and I want to make sure, actually, you know what? This one can get stuck down. It's the other one that can't get stuck. 
So this one I can actually go ahead and stick all the way down. So there's that one. So now what I want to do is now that I have my medium size one, I want to make this one a little fancier. So now these ones here are the perfect size for putting on top of your pocket and making some fancy edges. So these ones go side to side to the score line. So you don't really have to guess where it's going to go. And I'm just going to go ahead and add some washi tape down on it so I can run it through my machine so it doesn't slip on me. So eyeballing it should be pretty even. Oops. Not if you don't hold it. All right. So right there and right here. And I'm going to run that through my machine. All right, so now I've run that through my machine, so I can go ahead and remove it, remove the die. So I have this here. So all I want to do on here now is I'm just going to go ahead and cut straight across there, and straight across there. And I'm going to go ahead and add my score tape to this. And there are so many combinations. I can't even tell you how many. I just know there's been a bunch of them that I have seen, that I have played with rather. And I'll do a separate video showing you just some of the different options you can use with these. All right. So now this pocket here Go ahead and fold on all the score lines. See, pretty. And I'm just going to go ahead and burnish those down. So this is the one I don't want to attach all the way. So I'm just going to attach the bottom. And this is going to go right there on the top. So I'm going to turn it just so I can Get it down there. And then when I, I'll put my pattern paper here and then I'll attach this one afterwards. So this is the die. And as you can see, you can see the perfect amount of black that's showing around the die. And then once the paper's on, then this goes and gets attached over the paper. All right, I'll be back and we'll keep moving on. Okay, so for the next step, you're, again, you're going to be using the medium pocket die and you're going to cut out two black, two and craft. So these ones are all ready to go. And now I'm gonna show you how to do this. So on the, on the edge dies number 40, I'm going to go ahead, so we use this one here. This is the one that we used on the, the binding pockets. So now I'm going to use this other one, which is really pretty, you can see. So I'm going to go ahead. So on this right here, if you are ever worried about not being able to get those fancy pockets that you see some of the designers do, you know, kind of intimidated by it, you don't have to be anymore. So with this die right here, I'm going to take my pocket and there's no guesswork. You don't have to math, nothing. You just lay it on here. And it's this one here actually fits the medium size pocket die perfect. There is no guesswork on this one here. I'll show you. See, right across the top. Absolutely perfect. No guessing. All right, let me cut this one out. Okay, so I just cut this one out here. And look at that, perfect, super pretty. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and add my score tape to it. And again, on these medium size, 
I'm using the quarter inch score tape. But no guesswork. The hardest part about making these pockets is if you have a manual die cutting machine, cranking the handle. That's the hardest part. So go ahead and fold on my score lines. Again, perfectly mitered score lines. No overlapping. Burnish those down. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get my page and I'm going to open it up. So now we are on the inside again. This is the one that we did the fancy pocket. So what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to alternate. So I'm going to put the black pockets on the craft side and the craft pockets on the black side. All right. So on this here, what I want to do is I want to put these in the center, but I want to butt these two up against each other. So look at that because there's no guessing. Look at that perfect shape, just like that. So I don't want to go quite up to my score line here. This is where my page folds. So you can see right here, I just want to bring it up just before it, but I also want to make sure that I put my pocket centered. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it first to get the first one where I want it. That looks pretty good to me. So again, just like on the front, I'm only going to attach the bottom or the side rather right here. I'm going to leave this because I want to put my pattern paper on here first. So then for this one, I'm going to go ahead and put it right up against it. Perfect. And then I'm going to hold this here, making sure that they're going to be nice and tight, not on my score line, just a tad bit away from it. And there we go. Look at that. Perfect. It just, and there's no guesswork with those dies, so they line up perfectly. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom ones. I mean, with the craft ones on the black side. So this one here, because you already know where these line up and they're all the same size, again, just away from the score line. But the pockets that are already there, are you can just use that as a guide. So just like that. And then the one right on the top. Again, lining it up. So you get that nice pretty look, making sure it's all even. Keep this one pressed down a little bit. That way you'll know you'll have it right where it has to go. And then once you're sure, go ahead. I'm untucking it and I'm just going to stick it down. Just like that. And again, I'm not going to do this side till I put pattern paper here, but Look at that look. Is that not so pretty or what? All right, I will be back and we'll move on to the next page or the next section of it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next page and we are working on the back. And this is the front pockets and now the back side. So we're going to work on the back side. So you're going to need your C piece and on that one you're going to score at a half inch or at 1.3 centimeters and we're going to use this new die and this is a new on the edge die and this is 104 very pretty so on this one here so our score lines on this side here we're going to be cutting on the opposite side so if I turn it so you can see the score line here so this is the one that I'm going to do on my craft colored paper and let me show you how we're going to do this one so I'm just rotating it just because it's easier for me, but my score line is over on this side now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and line this up all the way to the edge and all the way to the top. Let me just get another piece.
just to hold it in place, so I'll show you. So we went straight to the top and straight to the edge. There is no overhang, so I am bringing it right up. So as you can see, nothing hanging over. Whoops, but it does flip. And I'm going to go ahead and run this through my machine. Okay, so that's run through my machine. And I'm going to go ahead and carefully remove the washi tape. So I don't write my paper. And save that piece. So now I have my little border. So you get little pieces out. So we have that right there. Let's see, maybe you can see it better. Not pretty. So now I want to continue cutting down. So again, get my pieces out of there. So what I want to do now is I need another piece of washi. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and put this again right up to the edge. So it is going to overhang, but I want to make sure it's even. And this washi doesn't matter. Use that to pick up the pieces. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this part here through my machine. Okay, so just run that through. And just take this off. So as you can see now, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut. Just cut that out. Actually, I'm going to use my craft knife. I can't get my scissors in there. That one. There you go. Isn't that pretty? Super pretty decorative border. Just like that. Okay, so now as we have it, our score line is over here still. So I'm just going to add some score tape. And I'm also going to go ahead and trim the corners just a little bit. So I'm not going all the way to the score line. You can see that. I'm just taking off the corner, really. That's about it. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold it over and burnish it down. Now I'm going to take my cover, I mean my page, and there's where our pockets are. That's this one, so you can see it better. That. And I'm going to continue folding over. So now I'm going to take this one here. Here's my score tape, fold it over. I'm just going to lay it right on top, lining it up. I'm going to hold it down and remove my tape. Just like that. And there we go. How pretty is that? That's going to look so pretty when all the pattern paper is on there. All right. And we'll be, I'll be right back with the next. Okay. So for this next step, you're going to need to make four black pockets out of the largest pocket die. And you're going to need your D piece scoring at a half inch or one and three quarters on the side. And to go ahead and apply score tape to the side. And then I'm just going to go ahead and trim it up. And this one right here, I actually want to make sure I take it all the way to the score line because we're gonna tuck this one in 
back of a pocket. So I'm just going to go ahead and lightly crease it. I don't want to go ahead and burnish it down yet. I just want to use it as a guide. So here's my page. We're going to flip it all the way over to the back. And this is what we just created. So we're going to go ahead and stick it inside here. But you want to make sure your tape is facing you because that's the direction how you want to do it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick it in like this right up to the edge. And then this will be our page. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my tape. And again, like I said, I'm just using the score line I creased as a guide. I'm going to go ahead and push it down. So then that way, when I go ahead and fold it over, I want to make sure everything is squared off. Then I can go ahead and burnish it down really well. Just like that. Alrighty. So now what you have is it opens up pockets in the middle, this big pocket, and these are our flaps. Okay. So now what we're going to do is the big piece that we just stuck on, we're going to work on this side. So what you want to do, like I said, go ahead and cut out four of the largest pockets. Now these will make the perfect photo mats for a three by five photo. So we want to go ahead and attach these, but before I do, go ahead and I'm just going to burnish down, I mean, fold down the sides because I don't want these. I don't want to use these ones here. So you could go ahead and cut these off if you want, but I actually kind of like how it looks with the folded over edge. And then you don't have to worry about it if you don't trim it upright. So I'm just using some quarter inch score tape and I'm going to go ahead and put that on the sides. And then all I'm going to do is just fold them over because we don't need those. And then this way as well is you have the sides are perfect. If you cut it, you might not get it even or depending on how picky you are, I kind of like it to be perfect. So folding it over makes it perfect. So what you want to do for or the step we're going to do is the parts that we just folded over, as you can see, these are going to be our tops. So what I'm going to do now is while I see the tops, so you can see those there, I'm going to put it down and I'm going to apply score tape to the bottom score line. And then I'm just going to trim it up. And these will make actually the perfect size photo flaps. So there's my score tape. You can see right there perfectly. So I'm folding it over. So we're going to work on this piece right here. So we're working on this side. So all I'm going to do is just center these all around my page. Just like that. Untuck it. And there we go. Just like that. So on the, this side here, there's no, so the top part, I'm going to put some pretty pattern paper. So that's why I went ahead and made the top, the one with the folded over edges that you can see, because when you put the paper on it, you're not really going to see it that much. And depending on the photo, if you put photos on the back side, you can do pattern paper too. But if you do photos on the back side, you've got a nice clean in it, um, a nice clean surface here with no lines. So if you take, let me just show you. Here's the die for the pattern paper. If you put it over it, as you can tell, it's going to cover almost all of it. So I want to go ahead and make all of my tops with those lines showing. So I went ahead and already made mine. So I'm just going to go ahead and line it up. I'm just eyeballing. Line it up to this side right here. Now I want to go close to the edge without actually quite touching the edge because I want a little space for when it does fold over. I'll show you close up in a second. So as you can see, kind of, you can see the craft paper there. So as you can see, I'm almost to it, but not quite. So then that way when it folds over, it'll still fold over nice. So now I want to take my other two, and I'm going to apply them to the top and the bottom, like so. So then this way when you put some photos in, everything's going to stay contained. So I'm just going to eyeball it Well, I feel it should be even. 
and then I'm going to do the same thing with the top one. Again, if you want to make sure it's perfectly centered, you can go ahead and use a ruler, but this is such a small pocket, and even me, considering how picky I am, I don't mind. So I know it's going to be pretty square. So then when it opens up, just like that, you can put fo loose photos and stuff like that in here, as well as putting photos. So you can put photos on either side. But like I said, this, these sides here now are nice and clean. So it just all tucks up like this. These are also not too tight. So if you wanted to just kind of tuck them all into each other, that could make a nice look too. Anyway, that's how you make the base pages for all of this. And I'm going to go ahead and make my other ones. I have one already made so far. I will come back and show you when I'm doing the designer paper on these pockets and stuff, and I'll give you some hints and stuff. It's just as easy as doing what we just did. Like I said, there is a no-brainer guesswork. And I'm going to say make three of these. So we're going to do three all together for our pages. And I will be back and I'll start showing you when we decorate these how super simple it is to do those parts. All right. Okay, I want to show you how to um, cut the pattern paper for this specific pocket here. So what I did was this is the medium pocket die and this is the piece for the pattern paper for the medium pocket die. So it's the one that would fit right here. So I went ahead and I cut it out. So this one matches this. So what I want to do is this was the die that I used to cut this specific shape. So what I want to do on this one here is I'm going to go ahead and place my pattern paper on my pocket, approximately about where I want it to go. And I'm just going to add a little bit of washi tape onto my die. So what I want to do was is make sure I am completely centered as to where I want to put that. And then once I'm happy, I'm going to take my die and I'm going to place it over top of the pattern paper. And on this, I'm going to place it just below where I cut the pocket. So let's see. So I'm going to stick it. So I know it's hard to tell, I'm going to get out of light, but I can almost make up part of the stitch lines just above that pocket. I think you might be able to see just a very tad bit right there in the corner. So I'm going to go ahead and place that just, <clears throat> just like that, and then I'm going to cut it out. So I went ahead and cut that piece out. And I'm just going to carefully remove this so I don't tear my pattern paper because putting it through the machine really presses the washi tape onto your paper. So you want to be careful not to rip it off. So this is the piece I cut and I'm just going to go ahead and as you can see right there, it's a perfect fit all the way around. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink it and glue it down. And then along with the piece for the, the larger pocket, again, I'm just going to use the larger pocket die and go ahead and cut it out. Okay, so let me show you how to cut out the pattern paper for this side here. So remember, we don't have our pockets attached yet so because of the main reason you need to go ahead and attach your pattern paper first. So I cut my pattern paper down to size. So what I did was for my size, I just measured between the distance of the two pockets because basically it's going to slip down inside um, or it's going to be here first and then I get it. I may attach, no, I'm not going to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead when I do go to attach it, I'm going to go ahead and put it down, attach it, and then I will go ahead and actually attach my pockets. So you can see there is a very little tiny space here and here for those. So let me show you how I'm going to go ahead and cut my pattern paper. So what I want to do is I actually want to go ahead and I'm just turning this because it's easier for me to see. So I'm actually going to go ahead and lay it down exactly 
where I'm going to want it. So I'm making sure it's even side to side so I have enough space on this side of the pocket and over on this side that I like. And once I'm happy where it's at, I am going to go ahead and I can see where on my black cardstock, right where the die had cut originally. So I'm going to go ahead and just like the other one, I'm just going to put it down just a tad so I can actually see the dots from my original cutout on the cardstock. So I don't know how well you can, I don't think you can see it, but it is literally just a hair down from that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and cut this out and I will show you what that looks like. Okay, so I just went ahead and cut that out. And I just need to snip it a little because it's just attached a tiny bit. So you can see, cut that out. And then it will go ahead and attach just like that perfectly. Let me let's see. There you go. You can see just like that. And then I'll go ahead and stick it down. And then these go here. And then these pockets are done the exact same way. Um, just laying the paper over, lining the die up, and cutting it. But I'll show you that too. Okay, so I went ahead and cut this piece out for my pocket right here out of the matching die for the pocket for the pattern paper. So again, just like everything else, I'm going to go ahead and set this on here. And let me just go ahead and add some washi tape. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and line it up where I want it. And then again, placing my die right about where, can I even let's see, place my die right just under, because, let's see, there we go. So I'm going to place my die right under where the cardstock piece was cut. And I still don't think you can barely see right here just a little bit of the black cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it there and then I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out. Okay, so I went ahead and cut that out. So this is the piece and then it should fit perfectly. You move it up. As you can see, it fits perfectly right where it wants to go. All right, so that's how you do all those pockets there, and I don't think, and then this one here, you have the larger die, so go ahead and cut that out, and I think that's good for all of the fancy type cuts that you need to figure out how to do.